Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Volta TST call. Uh, thanks for joining. As usual, the call is public and recorded and will be shared live on uh, YouTube. So please be mindful of uh, the comments you make and the information you share with the team. It's uh, going to be public. Um, first of all, today, I want to focus on the code freeze that is going to happen uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be end of day tomorrow Pacific if everything goes right. Uh, so I... Uh, as, as everybody knows, there's a JIRA that uh, we have for all the, um, there's a filter for all the JIRAs that uh, we have. Um, there's a few of those, uh, many of those who, uh, these are fine, meaning that they belong in here and uh, I did a pass today. Uh, some of them are in progress, so I would, uh, some of them are bug fixes and things like that, we can treat them after. Uh, the, the release, but I would encourage everybody to uh, take a look at theirs. There's, I picked a few that I'd like to go over with everybody uh, on the status of those, and then I'll, I'll open the floor if anybody has uh, any of those to discuss for himself. So uh, the first one is uh, the log messaging. Uh, David, you reported this one. I believe no work has gone into this one, uh, and uh, we can move it to 2.8. Is that a fair assessment, David? Yep, that's okay. good. Um, so there was some discussion on uh, who should take the responsibility on this. Uh, uh, and you mentioned that Siena did not didn't want to be held accountable for this, or meaning it wasn't Siena's responsibility. Uh, is that still the right? Assessment? Yeah, it just is not on our to-do list at this moment. Okay, thanks, that's perfect. Um, Himani, Teo, uh, there was a discussion on having some stack ID, uh, but I have not uh, heard the conclusion of this. Uh, Teo, do you know anything about this? Should we move it to 2.8? Is it even something we are gonna end up doing? I'm not even sure what this means. Uh, I have never seen this issue. Uh, it can be... So the Volta stacks are already identified by uh, a stack ID that is used to populate the KV store uh, prefix. It's used to populate the, uh, the topics in Kafka. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what There, there was a preliminary experimental patch that I was working on around stacks and bolt cuddle where it had um, information for each stack in a single config file, kind of like Coop Cuddle did. Yeah, I, I remember that patch. Uh, not, not sure this is related. Okay. Mm, okay, yeah, I, I... In general, I think that a, a story that is marked at 10 story points may need a little more description than just a title. Indeed. So I'm just going to do this. <laughs> and work with Imani on uh, understanding some more details about this one. So... And story points. <laughs> yes. That makes very little sense. It's like, uh, well, I, I can check with her too, uh, to understand the context a little better. Yeah. Okay. And I am just going to do this. Uh, Eight is the maximum we always give to story points. That means that theoretically a whole sprint, which means in our case, effectively, a release. But that's okay. We don't really follow that. We don't really follow that. Yeah, exactly. We don't really follow that, but ideally 10 is too much. So whatever. Moved it. Fine. Perfect. 
Okay, uh, David, you're on this one as well. Um, I'm not sure what's the status of it. I know we are including uh, timestamp and uh, identification as per Jaeger, but is that this something else? David, I think uh, this was yeah. I think this was actually yeah. I was just rereading the description. I think this was actually covered mostly by the Jaeger stuff, except honest, for the single, user. Yeah. Except for the user that invoked the command, because we don't have any user management involved. Yeah, that gets back to um, accounting in Volta, which is not there. Okay, but hold on. This is key identification. Oh, key identification means like everything. Because the timestamp source component version and all of that is included. The user knows. Yeah, that, that, that including the identifying the user took the action. That's more about accountability. Um, I think that we still need to deal with uh, authorization and accountability. But that can be that's separate from the other stuff. Yeah, because we we need an entire subsystem to manage yeah, exactly. authentication and and there they're actually and yeah. then we can log who did what. There, yeah, there's accounting probably should have the user to transaction ID and then that needs to be a secure log versus the other stuff can be in every log. So should I just assign it to you, David, and close it? Or should I not assign it to anybody and close it? And then I and then another one needs to be open for the user. But that's a whole another discussion. For account that that needs to be open for accounting. Um, yeah, close this one. Don't worry about assigning it. And um, I'll open one about uh, accounting. You can okay. not solve it as a one no, too late. <laughs> I mean, I could close it as a one do, yeah, but I mean, we actually did this. It's part of Jaeger. Yeah, fine. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Oh, uh, this one is for Holger. I'm not sure he's online. Uh, but maybe Ken, you know something about it that I don't. Uh, this one, I, I think I put a, a, a comment on that one. This is more about when we're doing the. A flow errors when the when for example we are trying to add a flow and it uh, adapter comes back says uh, a failure. Uh, currently in uh, in the core uh, there are certain default values that we set on the error messages and we okay. set back on those. So so this one is really to get the, the proper error message from the adapters. Uh, okay. Do you think this is done, or is this still uh, in print? Well, I don't. I don't think this is done. It's, it's not urgent because I, I don't think even Onus does much out of those error messages, so it's not. Uh, it's, it's a low priority. Okay. I just. I'm just gonna move it to future. Maybe Volta 2.8 and take it up with Holder and see if he has some more comments. Okay. So one that uh, I think will spark a little bit of a discussion is the five uh, TCON types support. So let me briefly give some context here. Um, the idea is that there were some changes that are required uh, for supporting all the five TCON types configuration within Volta. Uh, the changes uh, are not that big although they do touch fundamental components of our architectures, such as the bandwidth profile and other elements. Um, so the implementation is actually on Gerrit. It's, I don't know why it's not tied to this release, to this uh, Jira, but if you look in our Gerrit, uh, there are some patches related to this uh, from Gamze. You can see it here. Uh, there's one for SADIS, there's one for the OpenOLT adapter, one for Volta LibGo. Uh, there is also one for the Open the OLT app itself. 
this one. Uh, but to be honest, I do not think we have the time uh, nor the capacity at the moment to uh, test this before uh, code freeze tomorrow because uh, it would require changes to the ONF tests because it would require changes to the tech profiles. So my inclination is that all of these and the this one and all of the subtasks are going to be moved to 2.8 and we can have this we can achieve this feature with proper testing within 2.8. Uh, that is my thought, but I'd like to hear everybody else, especially Turk Telecom test, a uh, Turk Telecom opinion on this. Uh, Anja, I think there is also a lacking uh, hash here for agent. So oh, the open OIT agent. It's better. It, yeah, it's better better to uh, do it in the world to that it. Uh, no, the patch doesn't exist as of now, Andrew. Okay, perfect. Okay, then I would definitely move this to 2.8. Uh, okay. okay, and I'm just going to comment here saying a uh, missing patch for open oil agent and proper testing. Okay, perfect. Uh, just one quick question on this, uh, Burak. Do you know if uh, uh, how much testing have you done within uh, Turk Telecom? Uh, Burak isn't here. But I'm uh, here. Oh, oh sorry, Mahir. Uh, yeah, my bad. I'm not, not sure. I have to check it. Too. But okay, uh, probably it's tested. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll move it to 2.8 uh, and we can just leave it there. Uh, the last one I had uh, was this FCAPS event and notification corresponding to performance counters. Grish, I thought the PM were done. Is this something else? Is what, what, do you know the context of this one? Uh... No, the, the description says it's MIB data sync mismatch. Uh, yeah, these are different counters. These are not the actual performance uh, counters that uh, I implemented. These are different ones. Okay, so what so the, is this something mm. that we want to do in 2.7? Just plain and simple. I don't think we'll be able to do it in 2.7. Okay, that's fine. Okay. We can take care of this in uh in two dollar. Okay, so that those were all the ones I had as a doubt uh, were, um, were not either tests or things that uh, um, were partially in progress or something that I specifically asked about to somebody. Um, but as you can see, there's still like 50 items. Uh, some of them are bugs, which is fine. Uh, but uh, some of them are features and stories. So please do go and update these as much as possible uh, as per today, as per what you can achieve tomorrow. Um, remember that if there are bug fixes, they can go in after, and there, if bug fixes or tests can go in after the uh, release uh, per se. 
Uh, one thing that I would like to ask everybody is, uh, is there anything that you guys feel uh, we should discuss or get it issues that you think uh, are in the middle and uh, we should uh, discuss it as a group or what to do with those? Uh, Andrea, there is one feature uh, in BBC that is vol 3837. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, uh, is ready and working in BBC, but when we tested it at scale, uh, we found some, it's uncovering some issues in the adapter. Um, so it's basically the patch that I started working uh, on. Is it three, three, to, seven? Uh, yeah, unless I typed it wrong in my, uh, let me check. Um, but so it's basically the, um, the patch that validates the gem port ID and the allocation yeah. ID in BBC to make yes. sure that they are unique. Oh, this one. Um, sorry, it was. Yeah, uh, so okay. the patch is ready, it's working. Uh, it uncovered an issue uh, in um, in the adapter, I believe. Uh, I opened the Jira yesterday for that, that is 3915, uh, but I haven't had the time to, uh, to dig into it yet. So what do we want to do with this one? Do we want to merge it uh, and then fix the bug after the code freeze, uh, or we want to hold off the merging until we have a solution? Because if we merge it, these, all the scale tests will fail. So I would definitely not have the test fail around code freeze. Uh, so my preference would be to hold off on this one for now, uh, but still aim to get the bug fix in by 2.7 and, and thus, uh, being capable of merging this one as well. That is my take. I'd like to hear everybody else's. Was this issue consistent here? Or you saw it once and not seen again? Uh, I only replicated it twice, um, but I, I didn't have time to make uh, multiple runs, but I think it's pretty consistent. Sure. Uh, it doesn't happen on many devices because uh, uh, I got 42 duplicates on one run with a thousand devices and 50 duplicates uh, in the second run. So it's not a huge number, but there is definitely something. Yeah, it's still an issue. Uh, yeah, I think we should hold this until we root call and fix the problem in adapter. Works for me. Okay, uh, yeah. so um, does that mean we're releasing with a known bug, but it's only a known bug in BBC? Uh, no, hold, no. On, hold on, hold on. What I think the what Theo and Girish are suggesting is that uh, we we hold off on merging this one in BBC because it would uncover an issue in our OLT adapter and thus would fail the tests. Since I would like to, I, I need the tests uh, to make sure that the release is properly fine. We don't merge the BBSIM patch. In the meantime, Grish uses a custom image to debug this. And there are two possible scenarios. One, we manage to debug it by the 30th. We run the tests on it and uh, everything is cool. We merge both the BBSIM patch and the bug fix in the OLT adapter. The second scenario is that, the, hold on, the second scenario is that we don't find the fix we don't find the fix, we might merge the BBSIM one and release with a known issue. Or we decide to hold off the BBSIM one and, uh, and- Release with a bug. And, 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 release with a known, and release with a known issue without merging the BBSIM one. Again, we, we've released with known issues before. Every code releases with known issues as long as they're not blockers. The question is, is this something that in quote unquote production is going to cause an issue. Um, not sure. Uh, hard, hard to say. It may cause an issue in the case of an LT reboot uh, when all the enemies come back together and some get duplicated ideas. 
if this is a kind of production blocking bug, I mean, this, does this become a blocker for release? Is it that severe? Uh, not sure. I think we should take a day or two to investigate this problem. Most likely it's an issue in the adapter, but uh, I think we should, we'll be able to give more information after investigating this. I think we hardly investigated this problem. I think that, that's fair. Yeah. That's, so let's, let's investigate it for a few days and then either in the TST mailing list or another meeting, we're gonna to have to make a call if, if this is severe enough, if we can't find it, if it's gonna be a blocker for release. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, fine by me. And then I'll try to allocate some time to it uh, today and share something on the mailing list. Thanks, Neil. Um, one, uh, okay. Uh, maybe you can spend some time with Yurish on it and see where where we stand with this. Okay. Andrea, is there something to discuss on 3548? Uh, sorry, 3538. 30, 3548. Okay, let me write the conclusion here. Um, Mahir, you mentioned 3538. No, 3548. Oh, 48. Okay, sorry. Good. Great point. Uh, great point. Uh, that's a very good point. So, so what uh, we are doing for this one is I am aiming to get it in. Uh, Hardik started a test and we do have a BBSIM implementation for it. It's all in flux. Um, Girish has done some tests. Uh, so Hardik, Girish, do you wanna give us some updates on based on your uh, experience with this patch, what your feelings are? Is this something we can get in, or you feel it's completely off? Uh, completely off. I, I think we can get it in. I mean, I did test some hardware and it looked good. It doesn't really break anything. So, in my opinion, this is good to go. We get to try on him, uh, but uh, I have the test case. And uh, I think by tomorrow I should be able to uh, test it. Okay. So, uh, so our consensus is that uh, it looks fine to be niche on on hardware, and uh, uh, it works. So, uh, if uh, you confirm Hardik, uh, I feel we can get it in. Do we have an automated test around this? That's what Hardik's working on. Okay. Yeah, the patch for the test should be up uh, max by tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow in the standard time. So by the time tomorrow, no, tomorrow evening Pacific, which is the yes. The, the yes. time I aim to release, uh, I aim to code freeze. Uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can decide. But uh, my as per my thinking, this can can easily go in. Uh, there was a comment I left uh, for Gamze uh, on this. Um, we are effectively in a, in a very specific case rebooting the OLT twice. 
which I don't particularly like, but uh, at the moment it seems to be the only possible solution. If you guys are interested, the discussion is over here. Uh, I, I have not had the time to uh, get back to it uh, today. I left the comment yesterday night. I haven't had the time to get back to it today. I will, uh, hopefully later, uh, late tonight. Um, but if anybody else has any thoughts, uh, please do take a look at the patch. It's fairly simple. The case I'm talking about is uh, here. So what, what happens is that uh, whenever we receive a, a notification for the OLT up, we go in and uh, if, uh, come on, okay. uh, we go in, we update the reachability to the core, but if there is a difference between uh, the adapter and the agent, we reboot again. And this, can, this is uh, totally fine when the adapter restarted or Volta restarted and there was like some crazy thing going on in the Volta stack. And this is false and this is true. And we say, okay, reboot the OLT, uh, that's fine. The case I was a little bit more concerned about was when this one is uh, true, meaning that it thinks it was previously connected. And this one is false, which means it actually rebooted. The device actually rebooted. This effectively reboots the device again, which I'm not a fan of, to be honest. But apparently, if you read the discussion, that's kind of the only way to clean properly, to clean up properly the state. By invoking the reboot, uh, does it uh, does that process automatically update the state uh, uh, in the core uh, that would lead to the cleanup in the core? Yes. Okay. I think. You guys can yes. correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it, it does the cleanup in the core as well. OK, good. So basically, the device is marked unreachable as soon as it reboots. And I think that's good enough for the core. Yeah, for the core, that's uh, it's just look at the yeah. uh, connection status. Um, anything else to add, um, Mahir? Uh, no, I, I mean, other, there is some, some, yeah, as you mentioned, there is some issue there, you know, but this is an issue that we can face up during reboot also. I mean, when we start clean up from the Volta and get the device connected to OLT adapter, mm -hmm. then we pro probably have some problem. Because on the one hand, Volta, say RW core will start child cleanups, etc. Then mm -hmm. on the other hand, we will get device indications from the OLT. So I think there is not much protection on this in the code now, but it's a general problem. We have to deal with it. So I think we should uh, take care of it after this. Uh, uh, say patches result, so it's not the uh, issue for this patch, I think. But there is, yeah, there's some thing to be done for this issue, I think. Okay, one question that I have is, uh, will this double the time of uh, our LT reboot? Meaning, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, go ahead. If the if if it, if a reboot is happened. In, on OLT and we, as Volta, we couldn't I mean, detect it. And we think that it is not rebooted, but the device is rebooted. Then in this case, it takes a few minutes to, to reboot it again. Yeah, it, okay. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it, it's the case now. Yeah. We, we lose, for example, uh, we lose probably about two, two minutes. Mm -hmm. But this is the only way to clean the Volta and 
say adapters properly currently. Yeah. It, it is it is true that this only happens if uh, the agent did not properly clean up after itself. Uh, sorry, the, the adapter did not properly clean up after itself. Because uh, if you guys uh, take a look at... Uh, I, Andrea, I think that can also happen if the adapter restarts while the OLT is disconnected for some reason. Yes, yes. yes. So exactly, exactly. Uh, that, that is effectively the only clean case where it could happen. Uh, in the sense, no well-known case, uh, because uh, if we check uh, what the implementation is, whenever we uh, disconnect from the device, we actually remove, uh, we actually set the flag to false. Uh, no, this, this is the reconcile device. Uh, there is a place where we set the flag to false. Um, here it is. This is when we uh, know that the device is actually rebooted. So we do we, we update the state as unreachable. And this is triggered by the uh, heartbeat. And if this goes through pop properly, we just set it to false. And we are all good because whenever we go back to what we were looking at before, this will be uh, false and false. So it will not reboot the device. The only case, as Theo pointed out, the only uh, official case is where the adapter restarted during uh, reboot of the OLT. Uh, or, um, yeah, that, that's the only clean case. The second case is that something happens in the method, during the method here, some exception or something like that, and we are not able to recover. We just reboot the device again. Um, I'm totally fine with this. We can take uh, a solution in 2.8 or in the future to avoid this double reboot. But I'm, again, I'm totally fine with, uh, with this. So to come back to the issue, I put it into 2.7. Uh, whenever the test from Hardik bring back some information, I think we can just go ahead and merge it. OK. Uh, just one question. Uh, yes, I heard you mentioned about notifications uh, after the OLT get rebooted. Uh, what kind of notification gets sent uh, to the call? Because uh, on a reboot, uh, everything is deleted on the in the core except the the OLT device exists, uh, but the logical device uh, flows. Everything is deleted. So what uh, what kind of notification go, comes up to the to the core? Just want to make sure that uh, the core does not do anything during that time. Uh, during the restart or cleanup procedure, no other. Request, I think, go to the indications go to the core. But the case here is when we, I mean, when our W core started cleanups and it started to send, say, child lost messages to adapter. Mm -hmm. And during this, if reboot from the OLT is finalized and the connection is done by adapter, then in this case, we don't have any protection to to stop the indications from the OLT itself to the adapter. Okay, which form of, uh, of indication uh, that uh, you uh, want to use? Device, device discovery indications, child device discovery indications, child owner indications. Okay, so would, would also, those indication comes back up to the core? Yeah, I mean, in, in yeah, this this indications will come to the core probably because new devices will be discovered on the oil adapter. I don't know if they actually will come to the core. In in normal case, they they will come, but if, because we don't have protection in the code for this event, so probably we we will end up with some kind of panics, etc., something in the oil adapter. Okay. 
So we need a proper, we, we need to wait to, to the cleanup procedure to be finalized in the Volta in all of its components in W core, in OLT adapter itself, perhaps in OLT adapter, I don't know, but we, we should wait to, to the cleanup procedure to be completed properly and properly. So then we should reconnect to the, uh, say, OLT agent or T itself, whether it's rebooted and up earlier than this time. Say if our cleanup takes three minutes, but OLT um, restarted in two minutes, then we should wait another one minute to, to properly clean all the water step, then connect to the um, OLT. Uh, okay, sounds like uh, you need some form like uh, of state. Like, uh, like a yeah, we need some, I think we need to handle some other states in the OLT itself, all the OLT adapter, sorry. Okay. Um, uh, when you said uh, there are some pa possible panics, Mahir, is this something that can happen with this patch? I I, I kind of missed that because if it, if it's so, uh, we would I think we would need to take some action on it. This 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 may okay. This is the problem plus place now. I mean, in the current code, but the, in the current say situation, we don't have too mm -hmm. much flows and devices in a state. So it doesn't take more than two minutes. The, the OLT reboot is, takes about two minutes. You know, it come, if you send a reboot to OLT after two minutes, it's probably come, come up and ready to, to, be, to be configured. And we okay. mostly um, clean up this whole stack in two minutes. But if we have much more, say thousands of, subscribers and I don't know, a lot of services for subscribers and a lot of flows, then it takes more than, it probably will take more than two minutes to clean up the uh, Volta stack. So it's not a problem today with the current say number of subscribers and OMS connected to the state, but okay. in the future, I think it's a problem. We should find the solution to this, so we will, go and open it, or you can, I can, I don't know. We, we should open a trust for this to deal on it in the future. Uh, yeah, please, please, uh, please do open, uh, please do open a JIRA issue for this uh, because you have, you and Ken seem to have the best knowledge. Uh, so please go ahead, open it and okay. uh, uh, put it into sure. either 2.8 or future. And then we can uh, take it from there. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I think such scenarios can be replicated with PBSM, right? Uh, yeah. At this moment, the capability that PBSM has for this type of uh, scenario is fairly simple. To replicate the disconnection versus the reboot, it just kills the gRPC server. Uh, we put in place that uh, to test it, uh, Theo put it. Uh, maybe some more uh, mm, intelligence could be put in place there to replicate. No, I, I meant uh, the scenario that uh, Mahir was talking about, you know, thousands of OIN use on the OLT and if Volta takes more time to clean up, presumably, and uh, the OLT comes up too soon. After uh, yeah, probably we, we may need some uh, improvements in BBC. Uh, at least we need to arrange the time BBC um, say be ready after the reboot. I don't know, but I'm not sure. I will open the task, or we will discuss later if something uh, needed, okay, and we sure. can open a sub task. Sounds good, thanks. Okay, thanks, Mahir. Um, okay, that's all on this one. Any anything else? Any any other Jira that you guys would like to bring up? 
before we move uh, to some other topic. No? Okay. Um, so good. So the other topic I had to, for today uh, was just an update on where the, stat, the status of the software update is. Uh, we have a test in place for both, as I said last time. Uh, we are now testing everything. Volta seems to be completely fine. Uh, um, the Onos apps test still shows uh, some issues, uh, namely two of them. One is that after restarting the AAA app, there seems to be some state that is left over and it cannot be cleaned up properly after the device is deleted. Uh, that to me is important, but somewhat minor to the second one that uh, you would just mention that uh, Hardik started to investigate and uh, I'll spend some more time on it as soon as I can, uh, that the DHCP relay app restart seems to cause an OF agent restart, uh, which is uh, very odd to me. Uh, it's not the first time I've seen this issue. I saw it also in the, OL, the Onos HA test, uh, where a restart of the Onos, uh, of the Onos instance would uh, trigger a restart of the OF agent uh, due to some, um, uh, and to some uh, serialization issue. Uh, and it's probably due to a missing device ID in, from the RW core. Again, this is just the facts that we are seeing. I've seen this before. I was not able to track it down, but uh, a Hardik seems uh, capable, uh, the test that Hardik put together seems capable of reproducing it well enough. Uh, so I'll just try and, uh, and debug that uh, with him as soon as, uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Any questions or thoughts? Okay. Uh, if uh, you guys are interested, uh, you can see that test here. And if anybody has some time to take a look at the logs, i will be more than happy to take all the help I can get. Uh, so yeah, this one. It occasionally passes. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, usually it fails on the almost uh, update and passes on, uh, on the Volta. Uh, Hardik, any, anything more that you want to share with the group uh, about this test? Uh, I think I have uh, kind of explained it before, like it uh, uh, for all the Onos apps, it tries to delete and uh, upgrades it uh, for any Python version upgrade and uh, activate uh, with the new version. And then it checks uh, uh, that the, all, the, all the other apps are still active. There should be no Onos restart. And uh, then it performs the sanity test and it should pass as usual. And uh, just now, as you mentioned, uh, it's working for most of the apps. But uh, yes, so uh, we are seeing some minor issues with the AAA. And then uh, majorly, it's the something about the DHCP. So I started <coughs> to look into those. Uh, <coughs> but uh, not as such, uh, as a form. Uh, we'll share more details as soon as I happen. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. OK. Um, okay, any questions for around this? Uh, Hardik, do you mind opening uh, two Jiras for uh, one of the for the AAA test and one for the GCP uh, relay issue? Yeah, sure. I I do that. Yeah, I'll do that sometime. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, I don't want to go into the storage discussion today, uh, unless Girish has some very important updates based on his document. I would avoid going into, into this discussion today. One, because we don't have a lot of time. Two, because I don't think there are any updates really to be talking about. So what I would uh, uh, suggest is that we take this uh, 
uh, on for next week uh, and the weeks to come. Mm. Before I close, I would like to ask if there are any other topics that anybody wants to bring up uh, for today's session. Is there a link to GIS document here that we can which one read and comment on? Uh, that's the storage consideration doc. I started putting in some notes already, but uh, it's far from closure. So, but you can start having a look at it. Okay. Uh, it's at okay. the bottom. So, okay. This. Yeah. This one. Yeah, so the last yeah, just where I'm. Yeah. Go through it. If you have any thoughts or questions, just come uh, go to Girish for them, and uh, we'll we can get it. Uh, we can ask him about it uh, and talk about it next uh, next week. Uh, yeah, as Andrea so, said, uh, we have been busy. Sorry, Andrea. Yeah, we have no, no, been ahead, busy Girish. with uh, Rock Seven release activities, uh, but I'll try to make some time when I can and start putting in uh, my notes here. Yeah, but you can always go here and check the letter it is. And at some point we should rerun some of the performance and database size testing we saw with the updated Benami charts. They just did a, did a major release, including uh, it's got a merge to enable compaction, um, automated compaction in it as well. So I, I'd be curious if that changed any of the data that we've seen from previous tests yeah so to be honest uh whenever uh we decide that this becomes the first top priority of our release let's say it happens in 2.8 yep. um as a zonf will have to dedicate a person uh that effectively takes care only of this for a huge percentage of his time up to 90 percent in my opinion mm -hmm. and uh it's going to go through all of these elements, testing Redis, testing ATCD with the new Binami charts, yeah. like doing all of these things. Uh, right now at the moment, uh, I don't know where that, when that's going to happen and I don't know who's going to do it. So I, I agree that we should rerun the test. It's just don't, don't have the bandwidth right now and it's not going to be in 2.7. So yeah, just fair enough. leave it for now. Uh, I just got an update from Himani about the stack ID. Uh, she said uh, 2.8 and two story points to maintain stack ID in RW core so that it can be filled for RPC events. That should be fairly straightforward, but again, not in 2.7. Uh, Theo, does that clarify the requirement? Uh, yes. Perfect. So it's okay. basically just to pass a, a parameter. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Um, anything else, guys? Okay, then if not, uh, I'd like to ask everybody, again, please update your JIRAs. Please do make sure that we are in proper sync state for the release. Uh, my goal is, uh, again, to have only bugs by tomorrow night Pacific Standard Time, bugs or tests, and anything else goes out. Um, we'll do our best on the OLT G uh, reboot disconnection uh, based on the test. And uh, um, I'm going to do a pass again of the JIRAs tomorrow, my time. So uh, as soon as uh, I wake up, that's going to be one of the first few things. So anything that's left over or anything that you guys have doubts about, feel free to ping me for that. OK. Thanks, everybody. I'll, you get seven minutes back of your day. And uh, I'll see you on Slack and uh, next week. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks, man. Bye, guys.